Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'll be showing you how to make a king cake. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today I am so excited to be sharing another carefully tested, well-researched, and perfected recipe. This is a Mardi Gras favorite. Perhaps you have had a king cake before. I am so excited to share this one with you, so let's go ahead and get right to it. So while this is called a king cake, it is actually made with a sweet dough. This is a super soft bread recipe, really. We're gonna make it nice and intricate and super pretty, but you are going to need to start by proofing some yeast. Now to do this, you're going to need one cup of milk, and I like to use whole milk, and one third cup of water, and we're just going to combine these in a heat proof measuring cup. We need to be using a warm liquid in order to activate our yeast, so I'm going to take this over to the microwave and I'm going to heat it in about 15, 20 second increments until it reads a temperature between 105 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I just use my instant read thermometer for this and anytime you are taking the temperature of some kind of liquid that came out of the microwave, you wanna make sure you stir the contents because you can have little pockets that are warmer or cooler in your measuring cup. All right, this looks perfect. So I'm going to just pour this liquid into a large mixing bowl, and then I'm going to add my yeast. You are going to need two and one fourth teaspoons of active dry yeast. We'll just sprinkle that right on top. So for today's recipe, you're also going to need one third cup of granulated sugar. I'm just going to take a generous pinch of that and sprinkle it over the yeast. This is about a teaspoon. What this is going to do is it's going to help the yeast grow or activate a little bit faster. Now I like to give everything just a brief stir and we're going to let this mixture sit for about five to 10 minutes or until the yeast has formed a foamy cap on top. That's going to tell us it's activated. If you do not get this result, unfortunately, you're going to have to toss everything out and start over. All right, this looks beautiful so we can proceed. I'm going to add the rest of my granulated sugar and remember that's one third cup total. We'll also be adding five tablespoons of melted unsalted butter. For today's recipe, I'm using one large egg and I'm using two large egg yolks. These extra egg yolks add a nice richness and tenderness to the bread without making it too dry, which the whites could arguably do. Easiest way to get those yolks is just pass that egg yolk back and forth between the shell and drop out the white. Next, we'll add two teaspoons of table salt. And then for a little bit of extra flavor, I like to add a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon and a fourth teaspoon of ground nutmeg. So for today's recipe, I have measured out five cups of bread flour right here. I'm going to start by only adding about two cups and you can totally eyeball this, just about half, a little less than half of your flour. And we're just going to add that to the mixture for now. Now you'll wanna use a really strong spatula or a wooden spoon to stir everything together until you have a very smooth, completely combined mixture. And yes, it's going to be very wet at this point. Now, if you have a stand mixer, today's recipe could absolutely be made in a stand mixer with a dough hook. I just prefer to do it by hand so you can see exactly how the dough looks. Okay, now that I have a nicely combined mixture, I'm going to continue to add bread flour. I'm just going to add a bit at a time until we have a dough that has reached the proper consistency and texture. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like in just a second. So what I'm looking for is I want a dough that's not too sticky. I want it to be clinging to itself and pulling away from the sides of the bowl. If I touch the dough, I don't want it to be so sticky that it's just completely coming off on my fingers. I want it to be slightly tacky to the touch. All right, this is looking pretty good. So we're ready to start kneading the dough. I am going to just turn this out onto a clean, lightly floured surface. And we're going to knead this dough really well. I wanna knead it for at least five to 10 minutes until we have a smooth, elastic ball of dough. Now, don't be afraid to add more flour if you need to. You can dust the dough with flour, you can dust the surface as needed. If your dough is really sticking to the counter, you can use a dough scraper to scrape it up and you can add a little bit more flour. All right, so I would say it took me about eight to 10 minutes to get to the point where I'm happy with this dough. It's smooth, it's elastic, the texture is pretty much beautiful. So I'm ready to let this rise. Now, in order to do that, we are just going to grab a clean, large bowl. You wanna give it plenty of room so that the dough can rise. And I'm just going to lightly oil this so I'm using a little bit of olive oil, then I'll use a paper towel just to make sure the bowl is completely oiled on the sides and bottom. Now we'll just gently place our dough in there. And I like to turn it over so the entire surface of the dough has a little bit of oil on it. And we are going to cover this tightly with plastic wrap. 
and just let it sit in a warm, draft-free place until it's doubled in size. This usually takes about one to two hours, but if you have a slightly cooler kitchen, it could take longer. All right, now once your dough is risen or is really close to being fully risen, we can go ahead and prepare our filling. Now there are many different ways people like to fill their king cakes. Today I'm going to be using a simple brown sugar and cinnamon and butter filling, which is classic, easy to make, and so good. I'm going to be starting with a half cup of firmly packed brown sugar. You can use light or dark brown sugar. I like to use dark brown sugar just because it has a little bit more flavor and the appearance inside the king cake is a little more striking because it's darker. Now I'll add a tablespoon of ground cinnamon to that and just an eighth teaspoon of salt. And just stir this together so it's nicely combined. You are also going to need four tablespoons of really soft, unsalted butter for today's recipe. You want this to be really easy to spread over the dough, so if yours isn't super spreadable, you can pop it in the microwave for a couple seconds so that it's almost melty. As you can see, mine is pretty melty here. You don't want it to be totally liquid, but you want it to be easy to work with. Okay, let's set these aside for now and get back to our dough. So our dough is beautifully risen at this point, so we're just going to gently deflate it and we are going to turn it out into a clean, lightly floured surface. Now grab your rolling pin and we are going to roll this into a nice neat 10 by 20 inch rectangle. And I do like to use a ruler to make sure I'm getting it to be the right size and I'll also use it to kind of square off the edges because that's just going to make everything a lot easier to work with. All right, so once you have a nice neat rectangle, we're going to go ahead and cut this in half lengthwise. I like to use a pizza cutter and my ruler to make sure I have a nice, I have two nice even rectangles, but you could just use a sharp knife instead. Now I do wanna mention real quickly, there are many different ways you can decorate a king cake. Some people like to do intricate braids. There are just a lot of different options. What I'm doing today is a simple, but still very pretty wreath. Now let's grab our melty butter and we are going to put an even layer of butter on each of our rectangles. And I like to leave a perimeter or all around the edge of each rectangle about a half inch wide. Now grab your brown sugar filling and we are just going to sprinkle that evenly over the butter. And once I've added it all, I like to just gently pat it into the surface just get it nicely packed into the butter, or gently packed in. Okay, now many of you know that with a king cake, the tradition is that there's often a plastic baby baked inside. I don't love the idea of baking a plastic baby in my cake, but if you were going to do it, you would place it in the bread at this point. You could really put it wherever you'd like. I'd probably recommend it putting it somewhere near the center of the rectangle and it would get rolled up. For the rolling, we're going to start with one of these long ends here and we are just going to tightly roll this up until we have a nice rope. Now, once you've rolled it, you're just going to want to pinch the seams. And we'll repeat with this second rectangle. Okay, so now I have two nice ropes to work with here, and all we're going to do is just twist them together. So what I love about this king cake is that the design is really simple, but it's still going to be really pretty. So as you can see, I'm just crossing one rope over the other, very simple. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky. This is where we have to join the two ends together. Now, Sometimes one end of the king cake where the middle of the ropes were, it can be a little bit fatter than where the ends are. So I like to just go back here and twist it a little bit and try to work out some of that dough so I have a more even king cake. Now we're just going to need to work the edges together and you wanna get them as tightly wound and nicely combined as you can because if they're not tightly pressed together, they can end up coming apart while the bread rises again or while it's cooking in the oven. Now before I get the ends completely put together, I do like to move this over to a parchment paper lined baking sheet. That way once I get everything stuck together, I don't have to worry about moving it again. All right, so I feel like I have my edges pretty well twisted together here. So the next thing that you need to do is just cover this dough with a clean towel 
and I'm going to put it back in a warm draft free place and let it rise again for about 45 minutes or until it's nice and puffed in size. While my dough is rising, I like to go ahead and preheat my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. To get a nice golden brown exterior on the king cake, I like to brush it with an egg wash, which is just one large egg whisked together with a teaspoon of water. Now our oven is preheated and this bread is looking nice and puffed. It's ready to head over to the oven. So let's lightly brush it with some egg wash. And let's take this over to our preheated oven where we're going to bake it in the center rack for about 28 to 30 minutes. When it's finished baking, the bread should be a nice golden brown in color and it should sound hollow when you tap it. Now, truly the best way to test if your bread is finished baking is to use an instant read thermometer and just insert it in the thickest part of your bread and you are looking for a temperature between 190 and 200 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to let this cake cool completely before we move on to the next part, which is decorating it. Decorating a king cake is super easy and fun. We're going to start with a simple vanilla glaze, which we're going to make by combining one cup of powdered sugar with a little bit of milk. Now I have two tablespoons of milk measured out here. I'm just going to add about one tablespoon for now. And I'm also going to be adding one fourth teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm just going to whisk everything together. Now I'm going to need a little bit more milk. I can see this is too thick, so I'm just gonna add a splash more milk. All right, this is looking nicely combined at this point, nice and smooth. So we can go ahead and drizzle it over our king cake. But I also wanna talk really briefly about the sprinkles. Now, a king cake is made with Mardi Gras colors. You're going to need purple, green, and either gold or yellow sprinkles. I am using sanding sugar today. You could use non pareils or uh, jimmies if you wanted to use those instead. I also have a couple of gold stars to use just because I think they add a nice finishing touch. And once we've added all of our icing, we'll just go ahead and alternate our sanding sugars. And I always feel like this cake looks a little bit messy, but that's just the nature of it. You have all of these bright colors just scattered all over the place. It's supposed to be fun and messy. All right, well, let's go ahead and cut in and just take a look at how that brown sugar swirl looks inside this cake. Just using a bread knife to saw through. All right, let me turn this around so you can see that pretty swirl. Looks a little better on this side. Look at that. That is how you make a king cake at home. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. And if you tried this one out, please leave me a comment and let me know what you think. I always love hearing from you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. So good.